there. Today I'm going to be introducing you to my mentor. My mentor's name is Marlis Cluck. Marlis currently works at Church Mutual Insurance Company in Merrill. She is an accounting manager there. She was originally hired about two years ago as an accounting supervisor and has recently been promoted to her current role. Marlis has been in the industry for about 10 years. She originally got her start at a local grocery store in a bookkeeping role. Uh, after obtaining her master's degree at UW-Milwaukee, she went on to a full-time position at a property management firm, and then she worked at Whipfley for a few years, and she is now at Church Mutual. So I sat down with Marlis uh, to interview her and ask her some questions about her career, her choices, um, and a little bit about global impact of her business that she works in. So the first question that I asked Marlis in our interview is, how did you know that you wanted to do what you do today? Can you share your story with me? Marlis said that when she first started going to college, she was going for a major in math. She was going to Wisconsin Valley Lutheran. Uh, after quickly realizing that a math major was just too difficult for her and it was not the career path that she wanted to go down she switched her major to spanish she obtained a bachelor's degree in spanish uh, while working at a grocery store in the prepared foods department while she was working in the prepared foods department a bookkeeping position had opened up at that grocery store and she was able to take on that role and fell in love with accounting marlis knew that she you know, always liked balancing her checkbook, paying for bills. She liked details and numbers. Um, things that are black and white just made sense to her. So she went on to UW-Milwaukee to obtain her master's degree in accounting. And then she went and obtained her CPA license. After obtaining her degree and her license, she took on a full-time role at a property management company. She worked there for a few years, moved on to Whipfley for a few years, and is now here at Church Mutual. Um, and she does not regret it. She says that accounting can be hard at times. There are parts that are difficult, but it makes sense to her. The next question I asked Marlis is, are you happy with your current professional career decision and or choices? Why or why not? Marlis is very, very happy with her career choice. The only thing that she regrets about this career choice is not making it sooner. She said that she could have been in the industry so much sooner had she not uh, originally obtained a bachelor's degree in Spanish. Um, although it is hard, like she said in the first question, it makes sense to her. The next question that I asked Marlis is, were there any professional opportunities you regretted or didn't regret taking? Marlis could think of one uh, situation that she really regretted. So she had been offered a position um, at an accounting firm that was in a city that she didn't necessarily know that she wanted to be in. She wasn't familiar with the area. So she ended up declining that offer. She regrets declining that offer without asking any questions because it is very likely that she could have uh, moved to a different city after uh, you know a few months or a few years in that role so that's the one thing that she regrets she suggests always asking questions before declining offers like that so the next question that i asked marlis is if you could do something different with your career what would you do and why marlis said that she would not change her career choice at all she loves being an accountant she believes that that is what she was destined to be however if she absolutely had to pick a different career path she said that she's really been getting into golf lately and she thinks that it would be very cool to be a ladies pro golfer however she doesn't think that she'd be very good at that. There's too much pressure and she's not good enough at golf for that. The next question that I asked Marlis is, what job hunting or career choice advice do you have for new graduates? So Marlis' advice is to actually do look for entry-level positions. However, when you're looking for those entry-level positions, make sure that you're looking for a company that you can grow in. Make sure that that entry level position isn't the only position opportunity that you will have at that business. 
our next piece of advice is to always remember that you do not have to stay with the same company forever. They can be your entry level position, kind of get your feet wet in there, and then you can move on. Um, also, remember that you can apply all knowledge from any uh, position that you've had, any mentorship you've had, any education you have, you can apply that to any job or role that you um, end up taking on. Uh, try to know someone within the company that you're trying to apply for uh, by networking and growing your network. You can kind of try and help yourself get your application to the right person. So one suggestion Mar suggestion Marlis had was to use LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a great way to network with business professionals. The next question I asked Marlis is, what advice would you have for someone considering continuing their education and pursuing a CPA license? So this is a question that I was very interested in because you know, I'm kind of on the fence of whether or not I want to continue my education beyond an accounting associate's degree. Uh, so I was very interested in Marlis's response. Marlis said that she strongly recommends uh, setting yourself up to at least be able to take the CPA exams. Um, so make sure you have the coursework. And she said to do it while you're already in the school mindset because going back later is going to be way harder than just doing it right away if you're able to. Um, by having a CPA, it will expand your opportunities within your career of what you can and cannot do. So the next question that I asked Marlis is if everyone in her department at Church Mutual uh, has a CPA. Marlis said that it's about 50-50 for management positions. Uh, Church Mutual requires a CPA within the financial department. However, Marlis does work with people who do not have a CPA. So the next question I asked her is, what influences do you believe your business has had on the community? What about at a global level? So at a community level, Marlis uh, kind of talked about uh, the various ways that Church Mutual gives back to the community. So through United Way campaigns, through uh, a garden that they have on their property, all the produce uh, grown from that actually goes to the local, local food pantry. So Church Mutual is a company in our community that does a lot of donating and volunteering and all of that. So then from a global aspect, Church Mutual kind of takes a more indirect role in that. However, they do uh, kind of support their policyholders' missions. For example, Church Mutual does um, base most of their work um, with religious-based organizations. So for example, if you are a member of a church, you are likely donating money to missions that are going to go to other countries and benefit people around the world. Uh, church Mutual does not inter insure internationally. Um, it's more of a national impact as far as business operations go. So a lot of it is local. However, they do operate in all 50 states. Uh, the next question I asked her is, do you think that Church Mutual could grow to have a, a more global impact and to do business internationally? Marla said that Church Mutual could if they chose to. However, it's not going to be very economic, economically feasible. Um, and there just would be so much more involved. And uh, Church Mutual had would have to expand um, exponentially in order to be able to take on an international role. Okay, so an insurance company can have a major impact on a national level as well as a global level. Uh, the biggest impact that an insurance company will have is on the economy. So if the economy is doing well, investing will increase, therefore an insurance company will be able to uh, give up more claims which can help grow small businesses as well as large businesses depending on the amount of risk that an insurance company can take on. So in conclusion, although impact is indirect, for the most part it is still there in a lot of ways 
on a national and global level. Uh, I'm excited to learn a lot of different things from Marlis. I know that she has a lot of experience. and There's a lot of things that I can learn from her. Thank you for watching.